Hi, let's talk about uh, calibration in Spectral Workbench. Um, when you've captured a, a spectrum, it might look like this as one of sunlight. And what you notice is that along the bottom here, it shows just the number of the pixel from the uh, left to the right edge of the image. Um, and it notes that these are uncalibrated. What we'd like to do is know what wavelength each of these pixels is. And as you might have seen in the introduction video, the way we do that is we copy a calibration. I uh, took a calibration fairly recently, or just before I took this spectrum, and uh, I search for it here, and I click Apply. And what happens is it copies that calibration onto this, and then we know exactly what wavelength each of these were, you know, to the precision possible uh, in the calibration itself. And it's noted here that the calibration is copied. But how do we actually make that calibration? Well, I'll show you how. Um, we use a compact fluorescent light bulb. And uh, this is one of those that looks sort of like a, a corkscrew, um, and it fits into a standard Edison um, bulb socket. Uh, and it's one of the ones that's a bit warmer in color. Now, uh, when you take a spectrum of that, unlike uh, daylight or uh, incandescent bulbs, uh, you'll see that there are these really distinct peaks. Now, this is not a, a particularly good example. This is the one I just used. Um, but if you look at some of these other examples, this one is, is overexposed, it's blown out, but you can still see the features pretty well. Um, the lines are really quite separate, quite distinct, and also uh, we, we recognize them. This one, not so much. I'll tell you why in a moment, but this one. So we, you notice you have this sharp blue line, a blurred blue line, a, a, a wide or, or you know, when it's good resolution, a double green line, and then a bunch of other lines sort of uh, mush together here that are uh, harder to make out. Now, even if you have a blurry spectrum, you can see a lot of these features. Here, you can see that there are two peaks, even if the data is a little bit um, uh, rounded and blurred. You can see that sharp blue, and you can see the faded blue, and you can even see a little bit of this very faint blue over at what's marked at 400. Um, going back to the one that I used, here's the sharp blue, here's the faint blue, here's the double green, and here's some of that red. Now, uh, no matter which one of these you use, the process would be the same. Note these are already all calibrated, but I'm going to go through the calibration process again so that you can see what it looks like. What's interesting about these peaks is that they're produced by mercury, mercury vapor that's in the bulb, and we know where some of them ought to be. So we can use those as sort of uh, signposts. Um, when you click this calibrate button, you get this interface that just popped up. And what it does is it shows you this uh, reference spectrum. You can see it's marked as the reference spectrum here. And we've calibrated that one really what really well. And what, what you have to do is grab these markers and drag it around, line it up. Uh, what you might have noticed is when I had just uh, clicked it, they are actually were already really well lined up. Um, that's because uh, uh, we run an auto calibrate uh, when you start the, the calibration sequence. Although in this one, since it was already calibrated, it might have just shown the most recent. But if you run auto calibrate, it will move these to the position that it thinks are, is the best fit. It doesn't always get it. it uh, but if you can visibly see that they're good, then you're probably good to hit save. Another indication is this, this fit button down here. We, we'd make it turn green and show a lower number, the better your fit is. Uh, if you're below 12, it'll show green. Uh, and this is a pretty good fit. You can see that our red line is perfectly passing through the center of this peak here, and the green line is passing through the uh, rightmost of the two green peaks here. Let's try it on a few different ones so you can see what that's like. Here, it's actually uncalibrated. So when I press calibration, we'll be doing it for the first time, and it runs an auto-calibrate. Uh, it missed this peak, but it got this one. So what we can do is move this and it snaps and notice that the fit went down to 10. Uh, this one, I don't think we have to move, but we could just to show the fit will get worse and become red. And when we snap it over here, it looks good again. Um, one thing you might notice is that here, we almost don't have those two different peaks there, but it's still able to sort of figure it out. And this red line is lined up. Some of these are lined up. Some of them will line up better than others. Um, the other thing you might notice is that it snaps. It grabs onto the nearest uh, top, the nearest sharp peak, basically. 
and you can get it to sort of snap to different ones. If you uh, want to second guess it, you can actually turn off snapping and then it will scroll smoothly. But you shouldn't really have to. Um, the other thing you might notice is that in some of these, I'll go over here and do it again, um, not all of the lines line up perfectly. So this one looks pretty good. Let's go to this one. And this is actually the one that our reference was based on, but we've modified it a little bit. And you notice that out here, it doesn't line up that well uh, over by this big red peak. Uh, if we wanted to, we could just snap here. But notice that the snapping doesn't let us get really perfectly aligned. Now, let's say we wanted to sort of uh, do a better fit than the algorithm is able to do, and we don't want to snap it perfectly. So if I turn off snapping, notice I can actually get a better fit where not every line is exactly in the right place, but all of the lines are closer and no single line is way off. So notice that fit is actually better, a fit of nine, than it was in, in the auto calibrate. And, and I'll go do that again just to show you. I'll drag it here. I think I saw even a six at some point. I'll bring this over here. And remember that the um, as you drag these, the graph is generated off of the top edge of your image. So although in this one, you notice this blue line is slightly diagonal, but you're really trying to align it with the top edge of this. And you can always just look at the graph below to see if you're, you're really uh, well aligned. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to line it right up like that. We have a fit of 11. And I think I can beat that. I'm going to move here. And I think I saw 7. So at 7, I would hit Save. And it's going to think about that for a second. And then it will actually apply this calibration to uh, that we just did, the alignment we just did. And it says, basically, if these are perfectly lined up, then it, then it can guess the position of every pixel in your image. Uh, and it's going to think about that. I'm actually going to switch back to this one, because this one wasn't calibrated before. And I'm going to hit Save there. And you'll see what it does. It thinks for a second, and then it adds linear calibration, and it adds the, the positions of the, the, the peaks measured in, in pixels uh, of the two references that we use to calibrate it. And it says linear calibration. Uh, don't worry too much about that, but basically um, you might have, you know, in the other example where it didn't fit perfectly, things like the lens uh, shape and the, the diffraction grading shape uh, might make it so that two points aren't quite enough to get a perfect fit. You might have to stretch different parts in different amounts. We're not going to deal with that just yet, but in the future we might be able to do a, uh, an even better calibration. We'll call it something different. So for now, linear calibration will show here. Uh, and if you refresh the page, it'll, it'll, it won't say that it needs to be calibrated anymore, which is pretty good. Uh, once you do that, then in an image like this, we've already calibrated this, but or copied the calibration, but we should be able to go over here and look at recent ones that we have calibrated. Um, that the snow sky, that, that really sharp one that, that was super, super good is showing up here 12 minutes ago. Um, and in general, uh, you can just search for the one you want and apply it. You could, I mean, it doesn't make sense, but you could search for other people's spectra as well. Let's say if you have uh, clones or forked someone else's spectrum, and you want to copy that. So anyway, that's, that's the gist of it. You can use uh, any fluorescent, uh, compact fluorescent bulb, and I just, uh, on a parting note, if you, if all you have is a tube fluorescent, one of those long, thin ones, uh, it won't show up the same way. It'll look more like this, where you have just two major peaks and maybe a third one in the red area. Um, and what's interesting about this is, I've already done it, but I'll do it one more time to show you. If you press calibrate, it'll still, uh, oh, it didn't actually auto calibrate properly, but if you go here, this will still actually work. That line is actually the one that is showing up on the right hand of these two green peaks. And that would be a, a reasonably good fit. Uh, you will note that um, it is uh, not showing me that it's super good, it's saying 17. But uh, just for the sake of argument, if that's the only bulb you have, you can still use it. That's it for calibration. Uh, we'll be going over lots of other techniques and uh, so forth in other videos. So please check it out um, under uh, Learn. Thanks very much, and enjoy Spectral Workbench.